welcome back to my YouTube channel. This week we are doing another primary school teaching video. I got so many questions this week about resources for placement, resources for teaching primary school classes of all different ranges because I've been doing a few hauls over on my TikTok about them just as I pick up bits for my placement in April. But I decided today that I would do a little resource collection video. So just kind of across the board, across all classes, some of my favorite resources that I've made or that I've used for the different classes and yeah just kind of like a little collection it's not really a haul because I haven't these have been bought over the last three years so it's not really a haul just give you guys a, some ideas what kind of resources I like to use on placement so let's get into the video yeah so over this lockdown I've completely reorganized my whole teaching shelf all my drawers all under my bed where all my teaching stuff is so I've really had a good time to go through all my resources and make sure like what I have see what I actually have and that kind of thing so today I actually did the huge boxes under my bed you might have seen the TikTok of that so I found so many resources that I was using in first year second year third year I'm gonna kind of show them in different orders to you today it's gonna to be a little bit more of a vlog style random video because I might actually pick you up and bring you over and show you things okay the first two things are probably two of my favorite resources that I've ever made I made them in my first year placement when I had fourth class I made them for the writers workshop and um, so I made a writers toolbox and an author's chair so I'm going to show them to you now and speak a little bit about them. I mentioned these two things in my last video and I actually got a few messages on Instagram about how I use them, that kind of thing. So this is my writer's toolbox. I did make it for an all girls class, a fourth class in first year. So basically these are pens and pencils and glittery pens and pencils that can only be used for the writer's workshop time. It's to encourage the kids to be excited about their writing because oh, these pencils only come out. I bought a pack of um sparkly pencils so i just got these like in the range or something i got the box in the range as well and the stickers and the gems for the front of it and then i did it on the back as well and then i also got a pack of like if this 13 year class you can get little packs of 30 tiny little rubbers and um, so i got them as well in the range and then at the end of my three week placement i just gave them all one pencil and one rubber each and they were delighted and then i also had in here some things that they wouldn't really be like using in normal classes just to make them excited about writing so I got some glittery gel pens my other little drawers was your two stars and a wish card every writing session of the writers workshop I will pick out two or three lollipop stick names of the kids to come up to the author's chair and read out what the work they've done today even if it's not finished they just read it out and then two other pupils in the class will fill out these two stars and a wish cards and give them to the one person who read. Here it is, it's just this little box I got in the range and then filled it up with pencils and that kind of thing. Obviously it's not full right now because I'm not, like it's not ready for placement but I won't be using it in junior infants but I would have probably used this with anything I'd say from second to fifth. I probably would have got away with it in fifth to be honest. Depending on what 50 you have. Next up we have my author's chair. So I spoke about this as well in the last video. Basically this is just a little small chair from Ikea. Relatively cheap and then obviously when I made it it was mine. I left it in the placement classroom for the three weeks I was there and then just took it home. Same, the stickers were from the range. So I did just some butterflies because it was an all girls class that I was teaching. And then I just did these letters as well from the range. And then I also just did it on the back in a different colour. Because I thought that was cute. To be honest, it was relatively inexpensive to make and like I'm gonna have it forever now. It was one of probably the better things I've made. I would recommend making one of these, they love it. Next thing then I'd recommend picking up and you can pick up for relatively cheap in the likes of Deals, which is where these are from, Mr. Price, the range. They're just little educational posters. Honestly, can be picked up like for 150 each and just having a few generic ones in your bank to bring in on placement is always handy. So I got, um, sorry, the ring lights and that kind of thing are gonna show up on them, but this is a solar system one I got. I just got generic ones like, cause obviously I don't have a class. So tell the time, which is like a times tables one. Handy, can be picked up relatively cheap and will last you. And they're better than printing off your own ones of these you can just buy them for cheap enough. The next things are books. Now, and obviously you're not actually gonna be able to get a lot of these because I picked them up from random places over the years, but it's just like to encourage you to keep your eye out that you can get books and random resources in the most random little places. I obviously love books myself, um, so I like having a few nice ones that I think I'd love to do at my future class. Give some examples. You're not gonna be able to get all of these, which I know is annoying that I'm showing them. First thing, I got these in the Irish Daily Mail years ago, like ages ago. 
but they're a set of Irish phrase books for the different themes. So La Brehla, there's everyone, Turskula, Bia, there's loads of them. And they're very handy, I really like those. The next one I got actually in America, but you can get loads of books similar to this. I Obviously I taught mostly girl, all girls classes, but this is 101 Awesome Women, you can tell it's from America. That changed our world. I love things like this. I think kids love like once a week if you read them just to teach them about someone new that they might have known about. Which I think like would be a lovely thing to do maybe on a Friday before you go home or Monday morning first thing. Picked up these in the range um, like two days ago for two euro each. These are just little maths and English workbooks but they're good to have as printables for like early finishers and they had loads of different age groups as well. So they just have loads of different worksheets. This one is for learning to write and then this one is just like five to seven, five to six years old and it's a little, little maths worksheet. It's kind of a good thing to have on placement even if you printed off say five of these, five different styles and did 10 of them and then just had them for early finishers. This is one of my favorite books I've gotten. I got this from basically the woman who ran our Gale Talks that we went to, Kalashta Corky Gwivna in first year, wrote this book, Shinid Narudi. Maureen was her name, she was gas, but Sorry, I'm laughing now thinking of her. But basically, I said to her, could I buy the book off her? Because she had it in, obviously, in our lectures or whatever in the Gale Talks. And she actually just gave me one of her books, which was so nice. So I actually got given this, um, but you can order it online if you want to. So I just think it's really nice, because obviously it's written by someone from a Gale Talks region. And she goes through every month of the year. So on Nullig, Martha, Abron, all of them. And for the month then she has different shanuckle stories, rhymes, poems to go with that month. For example there, Man 4, you'd get like four or five pages of different poems with nice illustrations, different stories, different shanuckles, Oskeoga, um, to do with that month. So there's like Mina Hauna, and it has all your different like Halloween poems and stories. I just think that is a lovely one and I'd say in terms of like Age range wise, say maybe like a good fifth or sixth class. Do you know, it's it's high standard Irish. It's more for the girl talk to kids. This one you've seen, I would recommend this one while we can't talk for junior to first kind of, as a little story about coronavirus and social distancing. Beautiful, beautiful illustrations. I got this one off Amazon, which is I have Amazon Prime. It's a great place to get free delivery on everything if you're a student. They're just like different little man annuals and stuff I would have picked up over the years that have nice printable activities in them. Okay, a few more little infant kind of resources for phonics and that because I'm kind of homeschooling on Zoom a few kids um, for phonics. So that's why I picked up a few phonics resources and then obviously my placement in April is for junior infants, so it made sense. So I got this one in a Euro shop in the mill in Clondalkin. Basically had like shape ones, they had color ones, they had all different ones, but they, I just got the animals ones. So they match up with the word. So like, it's just a little puzzle and they have to put the, pick the word with the real life image. But it's good for phonics because you can use it to sound out sounds and then get the right sound. I just like using these as well. So there's loads of things you could use them for and that was like a fiver, I think. I keep them all in these little baskets as well, which are really handy. This, everyone always asks me about this little audiology bear. So he's a little bear with the hearing impairment. I actually got this off a neighbor who's an audiologist. So I don't, actually don't even know where you could get one, but just it's so important to have these kind of representations in the class. And I just think he's so cute as well. And in that same Euro shop, I got this little squishy duck chick. It's a little squishy one for infants, just for teaching phonics and that. This was like 150 again. No, this was like three euro, I think. And they had all different little animals for Easter. This is quite a nice, inexpensive little phonics resource I made that I saw in lectures. So I got these little blocks from the Euro shop again in the mill in Clondalkin, but basically what you do is you're gonna write some ends of CVC words on these cards, so like E-N, A-T, all that kind of stuff, uh, O-T, U-G, and then make some consonant little blocks as well, so that the child can put on, say, M-A-T, and then put the T there, or then C-A-T, cat, fat, rat, you can just do them all up like this and it's just a little phonics game and really cheap. I just wrote them on with Sharpie and they don't come off 
and yeah I'm gonna do a little bit on like classroom resources sorry my nails chipped but I'm gonna do a little bit on classroom resources to show you because I'm actually a, a hoarder this is probably the worst thing I'm bad for hoarding it's stickers this box is from TK Maxx it's lovely they do lovely big boxes like this and actually I got these labels from the range in Liffey Valley so like they have stationery, arts and crafts, pens and pencils and then you can just stick them on the sides of the little clear boxes or little tins or anything like that so I just thought they were nice here's the stickers it's the ips like the hoarding is really bad first like these are all just the euro shop and um, there's so many different kinds like I just I just pick them up and don't realize that I have any and then until they all add up like you can get all those books in the euro shop they're all the range like there's so many you'd actually be all day going through them like I get the numbers it's really bad to be honest like the foam shapes Christmas stickers you know there's so many I actually couldn't even, I'm actually a bit embarrassed by that to be honest with you, there's so much. Obviously don't go as excessive with that, but get, get yourself a couple of packs of stickers for placement, but obviously I just take it to a whole other level. Then I have these nice little trays for just come, kind of some markers, whiteboard markers, pens, pencils, all that kind of stuff. This little tin, then I just have pins, rubber bands, like bit arts and crafts bits. Um, just a glitters, that kind of thing, like all that sort of stuff. I made this box today for like small printed resources. So like it's just kind of anything under like A4 size. These are really handy. I actually got given these from a neighbor, but they're Jolly Phonics cards. The word and the picture on the back, they're really, really handy. I, I really love these. So anything similar to this would be really handy. Anytime I print and laminate any small resources, I basically label them and put them in envelopes. Um, just so that they're all organized for if I ever need to use them again. A lot of this stuff is just from Twinkle and then I just printed it out and laminated it. Um, so all my little, like anything like this will go in there. My little Matilda people. Don't wanna make this video like a, how I organize my teaching resource or how I organize my college notes cause it just, the video will be far too long. But if you would like to see that, give me a comment down below and give me a like or something so I know and I'll make that one. one of the biggest resources I make are on A3 card just from the shop and Sharpies. So some examples of some different resources I made last year for fifth and sixth class. This was an inferencing poster made and you can pause and screen. These are just all ideas from Pinterest. Like I don't come up with these on my own. This is the structure of the reader's workshop and the writer's workshop. Predicting little worksheet that I did the crystal balls on as well. I really like this one. This is the retelling hand. Music notes. So these can be used for anything. Finally, photosynthesis. This is for the placement that never happened. So I made these, they never used like. Super conscious that I always make my videos irrelevantly long. So I'm just gonna leave it there and I'm gonna give a huge shout out. Thank you so much to Ellie, Jade and Saoirse for watching my video last week and sending me a photo of you watching it. As always, if you do watch it, send me a DM of you watching it, a photo, or put it on your story and tag me if you want. I would absolutely love to see you enjoying it. If there's any videos you want to see, leave them in the comments or just drop me a DM on Instagram. My Instagram and TikTok are here. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. Please subscribe, we're so close to 2K, which I'm literally so happy about. I stuck to my word of making a YouTube video every week since January 1st or since the end of December. So I'm buzzing with it. Every Tuesday at six o'clock you have a new video. Yeah, thank you so much for all your continued support. I hope you're all having an okay lockdown and looking after your mental health and I will see you in my next one. Bye.